Thank you all for being here. We are here to announce the arrest of a juvenile young man in a probe of terrorism. The young man who's under arrest is, was, an aspiring terrorist who was not merely thinking but was doing things that are deeply disturbing and presented a grave danger to everyone, himself, his family, the block where he lived. And frankly, the people everywhere in Philadelphia and potentially people around the country or even overseas. I am joined today by a special agent in charge of the Philadelphia Field Office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Jacqueline McGuire, who will be the primary source of information for you in relation to this case today. I am also delighted to be joined by United States Attorney Jacqueline C. Romero of the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia Police Department First Deputy Commissioner John Stanford, and from the DA's office, I also have with me First Assistant Bob Listenby, uh, who, as many of you know, is not only a first assistant here who has dedicated his career to dealing with criminal justice and juveniles, but was also Barack Obama's chief of the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention during President Obama's second term, which effectively made him the person in charge of juvenile justice for the United States of America for those four years. And we also have ADA Christopher Angelo, who is the supervisor of the District Attorney's Office's juvenile unit. While I do have a number of comments, and I can certainly provide a variety of details, I really think the most important voice that you need to hear today is the voice of Special Agent in Charge Jacqueline McGuire. And without further ado, it is my honor to introduce Special Agent in Charge McGuire. Thank you, Larry. Good afternoon, everyone. As the District Attorney said, this past Friday, FBI Philadelphia took a 17-year-old Philadelphia resident into custody on state charges in connection with an ongoing investigation. This investigation by FBI Philadelphia's Joint Terrorism Task Force, or JTTF, developed information that this individual had communicated with Katabat Tavid Val Jihad, or KTJ, which was designated as a global terrorist group by the United States government in 2022 and is affiliated with Al Qaeda. This individual was also sending and receiving media containing terrorist propaganda and guidance on committing to criminal acts, including how to construct a bomb. The investigation further determined that the individual appeared to be taking steps to travel overseas for the purpose of joining or supporting terrorist activity. Most concerning, however, was the evidence that he had access to firearms and had purchased items and materials commonly used in the construction of improvised explosive devices. Some of these purchases had just occurred in the last few weeks. Among the items he purchased were tactical equipment, wiring, chemicals, and devices often used as remote detonators. These purchases quickly escalated this case in both threat and priority for our office. And this was now a situation where we believe public safety was at risk, so we quickly took appropriate steps to mitigate that risk. Working in conjunction with the DA's office, a warrant was secured for the individual's arrest, and search warrants were obtained. And on this past Friday, those warrants were executed and the individual was taken into custody by the SWAT team of the Philadelphia FBI without incident. I've been a special agent with the FBI for more than 23 years. About half of that time was spent working counterterrorism cases. And I know very well that these cases are not worked solely by just one agency. We cannot do our job in the FBI without our partners, starting with our partners on our Joint Terrorism Task Force and our partners in the Philadelphia Police Department. So we thank our task force officers and the Philadelphia Police Department for their participation and hard work in this investigation. We'd also like to thank the Philadelphia DA's office, Pennsylvania State Police, 
and our federal partners, starting with the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, Customs and Border Protection, Transportation Security Administration, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and the United States State Department. Now, we're happy to answer any questions. How many guns did you have access? Who owned those guns? Uh, just, you know, do you want to flag some of those individual weapons? Sure. A lot of the detail you may ask about this investigation is very much ongoing, so we can't get into specific detail. There is a, a quite a significant number of firearms that he had access to. We're not going to get into at this point uh, where those guns were or who they belonged to, but there is a significant number that we are concerned about his access to. Uh, I think it's fair to say, again, with investigation ongoing, we searched two different locations that were associated with this individual, and we found information that corroborated uh, what we already knew, that he had purchased chemicals, that he had uh, not only taken steps in acquiring those items and materials that are commonly used in improvised explosive devices, uh, but that he had also taken steps to start putting uh, potential devices together. Yeah, uh, as far as targeting, again, I can't say enough, this investigation is ongoing, uh, so we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. However, we do know that the individual had conducted general research into potential targets. Uh, I would say it was so general that there was not a specific location. It was not uh, just in the Philadelphia area. What is he charged with, and is anyone else connected to this case possibly facing charges? So uh, in response to your question, what is he charged with? He is currently charged with the following offenses. Weapons of mass destruction, criminal conspiracy, arson, causing or risking catastrophe, attempt to commit criminal mischief, possession of an instrument of crime, and reckless endangerment of another person. Did you have another question, sir? Anyone else potentially facing charges? Uh, there are reports out there that the mother has been accompanied by some of these chemicals. Uh, is anyone else possibly facing charges in this case? Not at this time. Um, as a matter of policy, the DA's office does not identify juveniles while they are in juvenile court. If there should come a time when this individual is certified to adult court, and my office will be seeking certification for the matter to be handled in adult court, then at that time, the name will be a matter of public record. And how about how this person came to your attention? Uh, sure, he came to our attention because of his communication with the terrorist group KT. K T J. So he came to our attention because of the communication, and then our investigation commenced, uh, and we used a number of different you know, investigative methods, including you know, physical surveillance and you know, routine law enforcement activity to determine not only who he was, but what activity was he uh, conducting. Uh, no further detail on this as the investigation continues. How old did he initially connect with this group? I'm sorry? Can you say his age or how old? Oh, we said 17 year old. And when yes. did your investigation uh, I would say that this investigation moved quickly uh, because of the seriousness of it, because of the significance, and because of the risk to the public. So I think it's fair to say, you know, just in a, a matter of weeks, this investigation developed. Uh, we're not going to provide any further detail on that. Um, what I can say is that uh, in a lot of our cases these days, obviously, I, I've mentioned my, my experience working counterterrorism cases, and it used to be that years ago you know, you'd have to travel overseas to go to training camps, and that's not the case anymore because you could very easily sit at home, sit in this country, and be radicalized on the internet or get that connectivity over the internet. So the threat has changed, and it's changed drastically, and then again, folks don't have to travel overseas to be exposed to the propaganda of terrorist organizations. Do you believe that this group is actively targeting American teenagers, uh, Americans in general? Um, what, what, are, what are their operations like? Uh, without getting into any ongoing investigations about any specific terrorist group, I think it's fair to say that any terrorist group overseas still has its sights on America, and it would be easiest to conduct that 
by uh, radicalizing those already inside the country. So that's certainly a priority of the FBI as we look at national security as our top priority. It is something we're concerned about, about juveniles and about the targeting of juveniles and others through the internet by terrorist groups overseas. Uh, I think our investigation to date, and again, it's ongoing, uh, but it's fair to say he's not only you know, purchased and obtained those materials and those items, but that he was uh, you know, taking steps to put them together and test devices. Where yeah. was the second location? There were, you said there were two locations. Mm -hmm. For the purpose of two locations, you said there was an effort to Woodbine Street on Friday. Right. Uh, right now, we're not going to provide any further detail or specifics about that second location. Can you tell the uh, was a residence? Was it was a residential uh, uh, place, location. Have his parents been cooperating in the investigation? Uh, again, we're not identifying this individual, and we won't answer any questions about the family at this point. Investigation is ongoing. And yeah. But not, not identifying, but are they cooperating in the investigation? Again, the investigation is ongoing, so we'll just leave it at that for now. Sure. Um, as I mentioned, you know, that, that threat has changed. And again, it's much easier for people to have access to the propaganda, to the ideology uh, that may radicalize them. Uh, and again, pointing to the internet, a lot of people have a lot more access to that. So that threat has changed drastically over the, the past couple of decades. Uh, what hasn't changed is these foreign terrorist organizations, again, having their sights set on America and being willing to not only recruit people from within this country, but to target uh, our citizens and our equities and interests here, too. There seems to be a lot of people that live in that home. If there was all this radicalization, how did no one witness or spot it, identify it, and come to authorities before you guys got on the trail of their online campaign? Yeah, again, investigation is ongoing. Uh, the young man who was arrested is in custody at this time. We expect him to remain there. It will be our intent that he remain there until there is a trial or other resolution of this case. We are not going to comment on this person's identity or the family's identity at this time. Um, they are state charges at this time. We obviously have a very close uh, and very constructive collaboration with the U.S. Attorney's Office. As you can see, U.S. Attorney Jacqueline Romero is here. And should this become a case that the United States Attorney's Office deems appropriate to bring in federal court, then we would work closely with them to make sure that happens. But at this time, it is in state court. The investigation is ongoing, and at this time, we could say there is no current threat to the public. Uh, yes, our operation on Friday was located on Woodbine Street. Do you have the block number or the area that you guys went to? Uh, I don't have it in front of me, no. In this specific case, no. That is something that is very common in our other cases, and we certainly always encourage the public to share information with us that they think is concerning or that they, could, they think is helpful to our investigations. Uh, but I, I attribute the successful mitigation of this threat to the work of law enforcement, not only the FBI, but again, our partners in PPD, in the prosecutor's office, both with the DA and the US Attorney and with a number of federal agencies. When you state what was the arson, the charge of arson encompasses both activity that involves the ignition of things that are combustible, but it also involves the use of explosive devices and ignition of explosive devices. Can you elaborate a little bit more on some of the chemicals that he bought and what exactly those chemicals could do to you? Can you give us a little bit more insight into that? Uh, sure. I 
we could say that the chemicals he was buying included chemical cleaners and the type of materials that are commonly used in improvised explosive devices. And we have uh, bomb techs, special agent bomb techs with the FBI, bomb techs with our partner agencies. We're able to take a look at all of these components, including those detonators, including wiring, and can say with uh, confidence based on their experience and their knowledge that these components can be put together to build a viable device. Did you actually yeah. have No. Upon the search, we did not locate any devices that had been built or constructed, uh, but we do know that he had taken steps to do so in the past. And this yeah. find a lot of these uh, parts online, local stores? I think investigation is still ongoing to determine exactly where he was making these purchases, but a combination of both of those. The house that he stayed in, is that, is that where he lived? Uh, that is a residence that is associated with him, yes. Going back to the delivery, like, okay, now it's time to release the gun. At this point, we need to take him into custody. Was there one thing, specific thing that happened that made you say, now's the time? Yes, I think knowing that he was purchasing these components, these materials, and knowing uh, what he had accumulated and having the expertise of bomb tech personnel take a look at those components and say, yes, with what he has accumulated, he could build a viable device. And that, to me, to my team, was very, very concerning. And we made the decision that we had to mitigate this threat as soon as possible to keep the public safe. How quickly was the surveillance of the juvenile? And for how long? I'm sorry. How quickly were you able to do a bunch of these activities? Uh, within 24 hours. Uh, again, the investigation is ongoing, but I won't get into the detail of what exactly that means or what activity will be undertaken. There's some reporting out there that the mother may have taken the juvenile to uh, purchase some of those chemicals. Um, is that true? Uh, again, not going to get into the specifics of this. I believe a press release will be coming out uh, that walks through the information we have at this time. I would answer that as follows. We made that evaluation in close and lengthy and careful consultation with the FBI, who did absolutely spectacular work here. Um, I don't think it's debatable. I think it's clear, but I'm not going to get into any more specifics than Special Agent in Charge McGuire deems appropriate. Uh, again, we won't get into the specifics on that, but I just want to go back and I support that comment. This individual, from all indications, uh, had plans of a terrorist for sure. This specific 17 year old, are you saying? Um, no, no information previous to this. Uh, no, I don't know of any criminal history. Was that the defendant's option to direct violence to an adult member? No. The, the nature of the charges is such that there was no direct file option. You say option, but the reality is that the direct file statute requires that certain cases be filed there. This, not only were we not required to file it that, there, we were not permitted to file it there. So it has been filed as the law requires in juvenile court, although we have made clear that we intend to seek certification to adult court. Are there any next steps in the investigation that you can discuss? Uh, not any specific steps, but I will say it's a very active, ongoing investigation. I'll give my thoughts on it, and, and, and not speaking specifically to this case, but just in general, we see this time and time again, 
whether it's radicalizing over the internet or whether it's being victimized by sextortion, uh, there is a real and present danger on the internet for children, so we urge all parents to know what their kids are doing online. Uh, I don't have that information right now. No. Did you want further comment? How do you hold them accountable? You hold them accountable according to the law. Uh, obviously, this is not a country that believes in guilt by association or guilt by mere presence. Guilt has to be established by other means. There are occasions when we can hold parents accountable because they're involved in the criminal activity. They're knowledgeably participating in criminal acts. There are occasions when they can be held accountable for a level of disregard of their children's welfare that is so egregious. It's actually a crime and there's a charge that exists in state court for that, which is called endangering the welfare of a child. These are all possibilities, but obviously um, there is no basis for filing criminal charges against parents unless and until there is probable cause for the commission of a crime. And I don't think any of us would, would want to merely assume that because an individual does something criminal or terrible, that means the brother is responsible or the sister is responsible or the mother is responsible or the father is responsible. I'm not suggesting you're suggesting that. I'm just saying this is a country where we act on facts, we act on truth, we act on evidence, and we follow it where it goes. I could say the defendant was cooperative in coming out of his house so that the arrest could be executed safely and without incident, keeping him, keeping the team of law enforcement, and keeping the public safe. So. Cooperative. Again, ongoing investigation, so I don't want to get into that. But. All right. Thank you very much.